Love the picture of the birds behind Lafreniere. And birds of a feather flock together as I'm reunited with my old friend Sam Cosentino, our draft expert. Nobody does it like Cos. And I understand he's joining us from Roger Sports Center in Toronto. Cos, I was hoping you'd be at the Holiday Inn at 370 King Street West on the third floor. <laughs> Ah, oh, the good old days. Don't you miss those days? <laughs> Sitting there in Edit Green, sweating it out, coming in a little late, maybe a little hungover. Wait, did I say that? <laughs> those are the days, man. It's been a long time. <laughs> Great to talk to you again, Ben. Me, you, and Jackie Redman are definitely appreciating the jokes with Edit Green. Uh, just a few days here before the draft on Tuesday. Obviously, like I said, you're dialed in like nobody's business. Which prospects do you think may have an edge on others and why? Well, it's really interesting because sometimes you look at players who had huge rises in the second half. So it's the Jake Sanderson and the Seth Jarvis, and you hope that they would have played in the playoffs in Jarvis's case or in the under-18s in Sanderson's case, but that didn't happen. So the lasting impression is actually really good. So I don't think they're hurt at all by the pause. And in fact, maybe even helped by it because there are no other further viewings to go along with it. But when I look at some other players that I think are really benefiting, the players that are playing in Europe right now, Lucas, Reichel is the pri or Lucas uh, Raymond rather, is the prime example of that. Last year in Forlunda, more at the back of the bus, really tough to get a read on him playing in the SHL because his minutes were down. But when he played with his peer group, you saw this elite player. Now, this year he goes back to Forlunda. Now he's on the top line. Now he's getting first PP minutes. And all of a sudden, it looks like he's about ready to take off. He's more confident, bigger, stronger. And it looks like he's ready to rock and roll. Definitely a top 10 pick, maybe as early as the top five. And then I look at a guy like Anton Lundell. Here's a really interesting character because everyone looks at him as, this guy's a third line center all day long. He'll never be center number one, but he might be able to get into that two range. Does he have the offensive upside to be able to do it? Well, based on what happened last year when he came back from injury, his last 25 games, 16 points. And then you look at the preseason in the Liga this year, and already in his first regular season game has scored a goal. So maybe he's the guy who's answering some of those questions about the offensive upside. We know he's a responsible guy, a two-way guy, wins face-offs, late birthday, so he's a little bit older. There's a lot to like about that player, but maybe some of those offensive upside questions are starting to be answered. The last guy would be Alexander Holtz. He, too, playing in Sweden in the SHL, had a pretty much a regular shift there last year and put up really good numbers. I think the same thing is just a carry-on, carry-on scenario. But when I look at those three players in particular, they have the opportunity to build simply because they're playing right now. Uh, so it's really fascinating to see that I think all three of those guys have helped themselves. Are those the story with those guys? How about the Germans? you got big three right now, and I'm not talking about Dirk Nowitzki. we got some big three German prospects. <laughs> what can you tell me about them? Well, Tim Stutzla is the guy that everyone's talking about. I project him to go at number two to the LA Kings. And when I'm talking about this player, an all-around guy, put up 34 points playing in the men's league last year, was on the first power play unit and a big part of it. But what's really cool about him is being able to watch him again in his peer group. And one thing in particular that stands out to me, he moves from the wing playing with men to center playing with his peer group. And NHL scouts are saying now, well, we're not going to draft you as a left winger. You're going to get drafted as a centerman. That has a little bit more value than playing the wing. And then I look at the two other Germans that are also projected to go in the first round. It starts with J.J. Paterka. And here's a guy who's got a lot of energy, plays a good two-way game, 12 goals, 12 assists, uh, playing last year in the German League. So he's a guy that can produce a little bit. And then finally, Lucas Reichel would be the other one. He's the guy who had the 12 goals and 12 assists. So Lucas Reichel is one of those players who everyone believes has that big upside when it comes to the offensive side of his game. By all accounts, all of these guys, they're bigger, they're stronger, and really in an unusual situation, getting this time to develop, yet not having been drafted. But all three of them, I believe, go in the first round, starting with Stutzla way up at number two. And as you know, every year, everybody always wants to know, okay, who is the wild card? Who is the one that seemingly comes out of nowhere to upset the apple cart? Who are the biggest wild cards right now, you think, Sam? Well, there are two guys, Hendricks Lapierre and uh, Yaroslav Askarov. But just one more quick note on the German players. They t today decided that their league, which was supposed to start November 13th, will now start December 13th. So they'll have plenty of time to train, no game action. Now getting back to the two guys who I think upset the apple cart, Hendricks Lapierre, number one. Here's a guy who many thought was missing a, plen a ton of games because of concussion issues. While he and his agent have gone to great lengths to say that, no, this was more of a vertebrae, a C1, C2 issue. They're not concussions. He's back playing with Shakutami into the preseason. They're about to get their regular season started, and he has been dynamite in the preseason. When you go back to last year, 
at a boat this time while well, in August of last year. He was a projected top 10 pick, but all the injury time, really unknown. You have to dig in medically to find out what's going on with him. The other guy is the goaltender, Yaroslav Askarov. He is without a doubt the top-notch guy when it comes to the goaltenders in this draft class. There is a significant gap between he and the rest of the group. Therefore, there's high value put on him. But here's an athletic guy. He's got size, right catch, give you a little bit of a different look. And a guy who's had plenty of success at international levers, levels playing in pro last year, really good. KHL start this year has been awesome. Does someone jump up into that top 10 ad and end to get him? That's going to be a huge question. Both of those two guys, I think, change the complexion of the first 15 picks of this draft. Speaking of wild cards, this is the final thought here, Cuz. We had Brian Law and asked Alexi Lafreniere what your reaction would be if you're not picked as the number one pick. <laughs> I know it's not going to happen, but seriously, would all your hair come out of your head if Lafreniere doesn't go to the Rangers? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact you said it decisively. One more inside joke before I let you go. It makes total sense. Listen, you're a gigantic baseball guy in addition to being hockey. But it makes total sense you're doing hockey. Because I remember, Edit Blue, you walked out at once and you said, who was working in there, George Gervin? I feel like I'm the Iceman. <laughs> <laughs> It was cold in there, baby. Kept me awake, though. Oh, no question about it. <laughs> Sam Cosentino, you'll see him Tuesday. Plenty of stuff here on the draft coming up, and, of course, Wednesday as well. Good stuff, Cos. Thank you.